If you're a business owner and you're currently leasing and not owning your building, you need to stop what you're doing and watch this video right now. What we're gonna show you today are three quick ways that you could get pre-approved and buy a commercial building and be the landlord moving forward. Hi everyone, Juan Weezar here, president of Sage Real Estate, your highest rated broker in the city of Long Beach. Today we're gonna cover SBA, but more importantly, how you could acquire commercial real estate using SBA financing. If you're a business owner and you don't know about SBA Financing, which stands for Small Business Administration, they have a terrific program that allows you to purchase commercial real estate for your specific business. We know this is a problem because we sell a lot of commercial buildings in Long Beach and the number one vehicle for them to finance that property is SBA Financing. But a lot of folks don't know about it. In fact, a lot of business owners have been leasing space, whether it's industrial, office, retail, for their business without realizing that that high cost, whether it's 10,000 a month, 5,000 a month or more, they could have been owning their building. Today we're gonna to be sitting down with Randy Jones with Spectrum Commercial Lending. Randy is well known in the city of Long Beach. In fact, through all of Southern California, he's helped a lot of business owners secure their real estate. He's a wealth of knowledge. He sits on the board of the Long Beach Commercial Real Estate Council. Terrific guy. He's been doing this for 25 years. He knows everything when it comes to SBA. We have a lot to learn from him. Randy, talk to us about SBA high level, tell us a little bit about the program and how can we give our folks some information on how they could get started? Right, so the SBA was formulated back in the 1950s. The main objective of the SBA is, is one thing, and that's to create jobs. Now, the best way to create jobs is to make capital accessible. So small business owners are now able to do up to 90% financing on their buildings, which is fantastic. You know, before that, people had to put down 25, 35, maybe even more. If I own my own business, I want to go buy an office building. With SBA, I could come in with as little as 10% down. That's correct. If I went conventional, just so the folks understand, like if I'm buying a million dollar building, 100,000 down, if I didn't utilize SBA, how much am I looking at as a down payment? So that the folks could compare. Yeah, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, okay. you can go you can go as little as 20% down. Most of the time, it's either 25 or 35% down. Okay, so we're looking at 100,000 in this one case, right? Versus possible 200,000, 250,000, 300,000. Right. So, it's, it's pretty obvious that I guess the, the main reason someone would consider SBA is the favorable financing, right? That's it's, correct. it's the very little down. Yeah. Okay. And I think that that kind of segues into our next question. When someone thinks about SBA, like are they paying a high interest rate, a low interest rate? Tell us how that works. Well, that's the beauty of it. Just kind of uh, roughly, it's, it's a 50-40-10 loan, which means that we as the bank put in 50%. 40% is done by the SBA, and then 10% is by, it's by the client. Those interest rates, everybody for the second trust deed with the SBA, everybody gets the same. It's the same financing, and the 40% right now is at 2.91%. Now, that's one of the, historically, one of the lowest rates out there. And it's been there, you know, it's been in that range for about, about three or four years now. It changes every month, but once people, you know, you know set their loan, it's, it's, uh, it's fixed for 25 years, which is huge. So when we're talking about 50, 40, 10%, we're talking about the 40%, that, that's gonna be fixed for 25 years. Correct. Typically with a conventional commercial loan, they're set for like seven, 10 years, and then you have to go renew it or the loan comes due, correct? Well, that's, that's the nice thing about, about the first trust deed okay. is that it actually goes for 25 years. As the first trust deed lender, we go you know, either five, seven, or 10, Recently, with, with what's going on in the markets, a 10-year is very common. So it's usually, after 10 years, it resets for another 10 years, and then for another five years. So if, if they don't want to, uh, a customer can just keep it for the entire time. You just said they're in the threes. I mean, Randy, that's, you know, if you're buying a house, you're hoping you're in the threes. Right. Through this program, you're gonna be in the threes and be able to buy a commercial building, is that correct? Yeah, so let's just say it's 2.9%. Ours is gonna be, um, anywhere from the high threes to, you know, we have programs where we can do projection based mm -hmm. that are, you know, into the, into the maybe the mid sixes. Now we don't do a lot of those, but, but we have that available because things like COVID and other things happen where they're just, they just maybe at, the, at that particular point in time are not eligible okay. from, you know, from, from, you know to, to get the better rates. But the nice part about it is, is that they can get the, the, the first trust deed and they can refinance it down the road. The beauty of the SBA is that they will subordinate. You know, again, it's a government agency, people don't realize this, but the SBA is actually pretty easy to deal with. 
Okay. Why would you ever want to get rid of a 2.9% interest rate? You I mean, it doesn't yeah. get any better than that. It, it, really, it doesn't get it any doesn't. better. Yeah. You know, you've been doing loans for a very long time. You're well known throughout uh, Long Beach, Southern California. You've done a lot of loans for folks. What type of industries are utilizing this program? Like, what types of businesses are, are taking advantage of what's in front of us today? Everybody is eligible for it as long as there's a business and Second, the big thing is that it's a for-profit as opposed to a non-profit. Correct, correct. So if, you, if, you're, if you're running a non-profit organization, this program won't qualify, but if you legitimately have a business, and it could be just about anything, and you're leasing, one of the biggest expenses that a business has, one of them is the amount of lease that they pay every month, right? They have no control over that. Mm -hmm. Leases are for a set period of time. It could be increased for whatever the landlord wants, and talk to us about the benefits for a business. Why would someone want to own their real estate? You know, if, if you really think about it, they want a permanent home. And, and uh, no better way than to have your own building, right? right? And then lastly is tax purposes. What they do is uh, they're able to get tax advantages to, to, by doing these loans. You know, usually it's the, you know, the, the tenant is the business. And then they, uh, you know, it's, it's owned basically by the individual and they lease it back to themselves. So that's a big tax advantage. I've done business with some folks who, who bought an office building and they bought it 30 years ago, mm -hmm. right? And you know, they occupied it, they met the requirement of uh, occupying 51%, um, right? So when, when you buy this, you have to occupy at least 51%, in some cases 60%. So you have to be the, the main tenant. I've seen it where, where folks, fast forward 30 years, tell me they've made more money in the appreciation of that real estate than they did on the value of the business. What are some of the requirements? If someone's watching this, they're a business owner and they're wondering, can I pull this off? Like what kind of information are you gonna to wanna to see that they're gonna to have to prepare to see if, if possibly they qualify for a loan? These are underwritten as business loans secured by commercial real estate. So we look at basically returns, tax returns for the business and for uh, people that own the business. I mean, that's the crux of it right there. We go down to things like their personal financial statement and their, you know, their personal credit and things like that. How long does it take to go through the process with you or another similar bank to get approved? We like to look at preliminary information right, right off. And that's gonna be a couple years of tax returns for the business and for the individual. And then we can take a look at their business debt and give them a level set of 90% accuracy right there. If you're gonna get 90% financing, it's a process. Right, and that's understandable. So no one should be afraid of the paperwork, Randy, right? No, right, one, should, right. no one should see like, you know what, I don't wanna do this because it's, it's worth to go through the process. Since you do the underwriting for a lot of these folks that are eventually gonna buy something, talk to us about more or less what they're leasing now and what their payment ends up being. I mean, is it drastically higher? Is it the same? Is it lower? Like, what is it that you see? Most of the time, if they're in a 5,000 square foot facility, they're, they're gonna wanna go into an 8,000 know, or, or, or 10,000. And a lot of times they'll use that space. And if they don't use the space, as long as they're 51% owner occupant, right. uh, occupied, right. they're okay. So what we're saying right now is that if you're a business owner from what you've seen, what they're paying f uh, as a lease, which they could pay somewhere similar to that, but actually own the building. That's correct. And, and I think the, the, the big reason is that rents are going up, interest rates are way down. It seems to me, like it's a no-brainer. Personally, I just bought the office building next door, mm -hmm. okay, with SBA financing, mm -hmm. and I went through it. For those who have heard of the program, they think that it's like this six-month process to actually secure the loan, and that was certainly not my experience. Talk to us about timing and what, what you've seen. When it first started out, and, and I would say even up to maybe 25 years ago, it could be months. The SBA, I would say in the mid to late 1990s, they streamlined it so that all in all, it's about a six, seven, maybe eight week process. Is there a limit to the amount of SBA loans a business can receive? The limit on there is $5 million, and that's $5 million of eligibility. You can go up to 5.5 million if there's a green component involved. Now, it's, it's getting a little bit into the weeds on it, but, but uh, let's, just say, let's just say there's five or five, five, 5.5 million. When it comes to owner-occupied commercial buildings in your business, how much of those is SBA percentage-wise? I want to say it's probably well over 75%. Is there any um, personal guarantee that the borrower would have to take on and then talk to us, is there any prepayment penalty? Yes, absolutely have to have personal guarantees. And this is anyone who owns either 20% or more of the company or the borrowing entity. 
what do, what do I mean by the what do I mean by the borrowing entity? I mean, uh, if you put together a single asset LLC, and it's let's just say it's 50% owned by the person that owns the company, and you know, let's just say his father wants to come in because he's putting putting down the, the, the down payment. Sure. Then he would have to be a guarantor. So it's it's possible because you talk, because you brought up the situation where you're bringing in the the father or the father-in-law. It's possible to get gifted money for that 10%? Yes, it is. And um, it's even getting better because uh, with some of these programs now, in the Hispanic, African-American, mm -hmm. and women-owned businesses, now you can, you can borrow 5% down. So half of the down payment you can now borrow from, from, the, from the government. So you're saying that you know, up until this point, we've been talking about 10% down. You're saying that if you're considered minority, okay, in, in the eyes of the government, you could buy a commercial building with 5% down? That's correct. And they're gonna lend the balance of it through, through the way that they break it down. That's why the education process is so important. Yeah. This program came out a couple months ago. Oh, so this is so this is like a breaking, breaking yes. news. It, 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 it is breaking news. Okay, yeah. <laughs> got it. Like I'm looking outside right now, Randy, and I and so we got a coffee store, we have a restaurant, we have a barber. Can all those businesses, if they qualify from their business, uh, you know, from the tax returns? You're saying all those businesses could potentially qualify for a commercial loan? Exactly. Every single one of those. I just did, of all things, uh, a hot dog stand. The people that bought it are extremely adept at running that type of business. Yeah. And and uh, they were happy to get it at $900,000. And that's amazing. And it, it's almost like if you own a business, you should go down this route to see if you qualify. And if you don't, at least you check that off the box. For whatever reason, you didn't qualify, okay. But if you do, Going back to it's a no-brainer. You're going to invest in appreciating assets. Mm -hmm. You're going to cap your lease expense because no one's going to be able to raise the rent on you anymore. Exactly right. I don't own the business yet, but I'm going to buy the business and I hope to own the real estate. Can someone be looking at it and be entering into that and get this kind of financing or do they have to be in it already? It's tough when you don't have the business and you want to buy it. It's possible, but it's probably going to require more doubt. But it makes it very difficult if you're not in business for at least, let's say a year and a half or two years. What if um, someone's an existing business and they want to acquire another business? So now like they should meet the requirements. Can someone get SBA financing, not only just for the real estate, but also for the business that's there? They can. And, they and, can. Yeah. And it's probably going to be two separate loans though. Got it. One's going to be for the real estate, one's going to be for the business. Got it. Okay. Okay. So then those would be separated out. Yeah. And I want to just bring up one, one small point Please. too. We can do tenant improvements and they're going to be in there for a long time. So they need to do, whether it's the office or to the, to the warehouse or anything, they, they need to do structural changes and we're able to finance those also. What you're saying is not only will the SBA give the, the loan on the real estate, they're also going to assist with the loan on the improvements. Correct. The renovations behind it. Correct. Okay. I mean, that's that's amazing. So some people do uh, tenant improvements up to a million dollars. They'll do two appraisals. One is as is and one is as completed. Most of the time, you can do a, the dollar for dollar increase and what they're doing is, is it's, it's going to be a dollar for dollar increase in the, in the property. Are these loans assumable. So and, and what I mean is, can you can you buy a commercial building, whether it's office, whether it's retail, whatever, industrial, can you sell it and can someone assume that loan or would they have to just start all? Just, start over. Just start over. Yeah. It's, it's not something that would be assumable. Right. Okay. So the way that I'm going to wrap this up, and, and this is important to know, you have to be a business owner. You have to want to buy your building or another building because you don't have to necessarily buy that one. That one may not be for sale. So I want to end with this. Is it going to cost you anything to know whether you qualify or not? Absolutely, positively not. So it's not going to cost you anything. It'll cost you some time, but that's worth it. So, so my question to you is, what's the best that can happen? What's the best that can happen, right? Right. Well, the, yeah, and the best that can happen is, is that uh, we put together a program that's, that's best suited for you. And you know, we, we want to get you the lowest rate, best deal we can. But, but um, I have to tell you something. Most people we talk to, we're able to help. So there you have it. That's my interview with Randy Jones, Spectrum commercial lending. So here are my biggest takeaways. It's almost as if it's a no-brainer. If you're a business owner and you've been in business for a year and a half to two years or more, you need to contact Randy or someone who does SBA loans because we need to find out, do you qualify for a commercial loan? And why should you care? Well, one, let's talk about controlling your biggest expense. One of your biggest expense is capping, capping that lease payment. Randy told us, hey, in most cases from what he's seeing, what you pay for a lease is what your mortgage is going to be. Okay, 
You're gonna control your biggest expense, and which takes me to my second point, is appreciation. The one thing we teach here at Sage Real Estate is when you invest in real estate, especially Southern California real estate, it goes up in value. So it's quite possible that although you own a restaurant, you end up owning the real estate and fast forward 20 years from now, 10 years from now, the real estate is worth way more than your business is ever gonna be. So in a way, what you're doing is just producing another income stream for you, for your family to come. So clearly no brainer, there's, there's tax purposes behind it, terrific interest rates. I mean, this deal gets better and better. If you're a minority, you could buy a commercial building with 5% down. That was breaking news today. I'm super excited. I want you to reach out to me. Let's have that conversation today. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was very beneficial. If there's a subject you'd like for us to cover here at Sage Real Estate, please let us know. In the meantime, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We'll see you next time.